Hello and welcome to John Drinks, where today we're looking at the beer milkshake from Red Dwarf. And as you may have noticed already, due to restrictive filming space in my flat, we're doing today's video in the vein of binging with Babish. They say imitation is the highest form of flattery, but in my case this is less a case of imitation and more putting on daddy's shoes and pretending to go to work like a grown-up. And whilst I would normally apologise to Andrew Ray for calling him daddy, after five years on YouTube, I'm sure he's used to it by now. So a beer milkshake is exactly what it sounds like, beer and milkshake. Now if I wanted an easy go of things, then this is a really good way to make something delicious. Unfortunately, in the interest of screen accuracy, we have to first look at the kind of beer David Lister and the denizens of the JMC mining ship Red Dwarf will be drinking, and... It's not good news. The ubiquitous booze on board is a 5.1% ABV fictional feral feline livrid lager appellated as Leopard. You heard me. This is going to be disgusting, probably. Now obviously this stuff doesn't actually exist, and so we need a real-life consulate substitute to execute our resolute pursuit of a David Lister dairy-based space place tribute of questionable aftertaste. Enough with the Bojack tongue twisters though. For our Leopard substitute, we've gone German with Rothaus commonly available pilsner clocking in at, you guessed it, 5.1% ABV. How to make this monstrosity? Well, unlike the Toaxian chef of a certain intrepid class starship, the Red Dwarf series has never published a companion cookbook, and so the recipe for this elixir is somewhat up to guesswork. Given Lister's lack of culinary skill, however, we can safely assume that there are no magical ingredients that comprise this lactose lace monstrosity. To that end, we're going to go the route of least resistance and make up a classic vanilla milkshake. Today I'm following a recipe online which calls for a smeg load of vanilla ice cream and milk. Link to the recipe will be in the description box below. I'm making a half batch here because frankly I have zero confidence in its potential to be anything other than unpleasant. To the finished milkshake we're going to add about 250ml, or half a bottle, of lager. It is upon whizzing I remember carbonation and high speed whirling blades might not the best bedfellows make, and so once I'm done you can see me gingerly prising open the lid here and... Phew. No explosion. Now Lister normally drinks this out of a ship issue plastic mug, but this is the age of Pinterest, so I'm topping this puppy off with cream and garnishing with a maraschino cherry. And now, the Inquisition begins. Mmm. <laughs> I don't know, there's something weirdly ricey about it, which given there is no rice in any of this, is confusing and disturbing. So that's fun. I mean, I've got spare, if nothing else, so that's great. Now, when it comes to the food and drink in the universe of Red Dwarf, not very few things are appealing, with the exception being Lister's Breakfast in Polymorph, which sounded delightful. There's, there's very few things... I mean, there's Caroline Carmen's ear, there's Space Weevil, there's Urine Recycle Wine. All of these things I could have done, but I decided to go with the most... Saint... I could have just done a curry. I could have just fucking done a curry and, like, phoned it in, but... Here we are. <sighs> it looks quite attractive, or it looked quite attractive. It's taken a while to get this set up, but, um... Yeah, so it's kind of collapsed a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test the, the cream, because, um... Just gonna check it for poison, you know. Just pretty nice, yeah, yeah. Like a like a bit of whipped cream. Don't read too much into that. Yeah, I did, actually, that's really nice cream. Um, there's a cherry here as well. Am I stalling for time? You better fucking believe I am. Oh, where'd the cherry go? No, hang on. I'm I am not moving forward until I have eaten this cherry. So if you'll excuse me, this is gonna be um, erotic. Oh, strangely enough, sucking did do the job. I didn't think this through, did I? <laughs> oh, I'm back. I've just had to go and use the cat as a napkin. <clears throat> so, beer milkshake. Did, did he know what he was doing? Pro probably not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the dairy will just kind of cancel it out. It's not, it's not disgusting. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not good. That's not, that is not a good thing that I've made. Okay, all right, cool. So, oh, Christ alive. 
So first things first, why, why did I choose this beer? In an effort to be screen accurate, obviously Leper doesn't exist. Now, Peroni is also 5.1% ABV. You could use that. I'd strongly advise using it in cans if you're going to, because it's only going to be worse. What I would advise is you don't do this. Because it's not... I've got a lot of this to drink now. I might not do that. Oh. Oh. Okay. It is exactly what you think it would be. It's two things that don't belong together. It's like an abusive marriage in a glass. It's not good. It's, um... I mean, I've had worse things. I could stick some chartreuse in this and that would... Oh god, that would be... No, that would be unholy. I get the feeling I made a really nice vanilla milkshake and then just fucked it up. Now, to be fair, I could have just added like a dribble of beer in it and I probably wouldn't even be able to detect it and I could just have a great time now. But that's not what's happening here. That's... <sighs> oh, yeah. Okay, so you get a lovely vanilla flavour um, from the oat milk and the vanilla ice cream and the vanilla essence and a little bit of sugar in there, which is a bit of a weird addition, but I went with the recipe. And then you get this like wave of slightly stale beer, which is weird because I just popped the cap on it. It shouldn't taste stale, but it oddly does when you marry it with oat-based dairy <laughs> and ice cream and like, Ugh, I need to cheer myself up, excuse me. <coughs> this this is Mo everyone. This is this is my cat. He um he knows what's happened and he is freaking the fuck out. Are you, are you gonna go? Yeah. Um comment down below, should I have done this? <laughs> if you were gonna make a beer milkshake, what would you do differently other than everything else? I mean the obvious thing to do would be to, you know, like do a milk stout or something. I could totally do that for like a future video, like as a revisit. If we just, you know, throw everything out of the window and start again, that could probably work. I get the feeling the vanilla milkshake's probably really nice and I just ruined it, so no shade to the, the milkshake recipe. Um, also, let me know down below, what's your favourite episode of Red Dwarf? If by any chance you want to know what mine are, um, you're in luck, because there'll be a card here. Um, I've done a, a tier ranking thing of every episode of Red Dwarf ever made. What does that have to do with drinking? Absolutely fucking nothing. But hey, it's a self-indulgence, and I... Actually, I do that all the time, that's the literal premise of this channel. But hey-ho! That's, that's, that's fine. I'm not drinking any more of this, I'm gonna go away and be sad somewhere. But... Leave me a, a thumb, and if you feel like supporting me mentally, then you can leave me some counselling in the comments down below, or there's also an opportunity to join the channel or join my Patreon, and there's links down below. I'm done pleading now. Thank you very much for watching. Um, do you know, actually, a thought occurred recently. You know, like, the more recent Dave series, like, starting with Series 10, they actually bothered to get, like, the old model out. And they filmed it, and they were going to put it as, like, part of the title sequence. You know how, like, in the original series, you had, like, the Red Dwarf flyby, and you had the titles? And for some reason, they just didn't do that. Somebody should, somebody should make use of that.